Hello guys, I'm Fran for coolproject.es and today I come with this video I've done for my fellow friend Anthony from Lexpert Frigolis blog. It's a medium level video in which we are going to see the main components of the refrigerating circuit for a typical cold room. It's a room or a chamber for conservation of refrigerated products like fruits, vegetables, meat or fish. Let's go. A cold room works normally between 0 to 10 degrees and relative humidity from 80 to 90 percent, always positive temperature. In this scheme we can see the components for a cold room circuit represented by their normalized symbols we use here in Spain. In red color we have the high pressure line and in blue color we have the low pressure line. Let's review the main components. We can see on the right of the screen here each component numbered and accompanied with the picture. First we have the four uh, basic components. In number one we have the reciprocating compressor, number seven is the condenser, number 13 we have the thermostatic expansion valve and 14 we have the evaporator. Just with these components the system can work but we usually add some other auxiliary devices in order to improve the functioning of the system. For example in number two we have the starting bypass, which we use normally in compressors of more than 10 horsepower. The goal is to allow the compressor to start without charge, bypassing suction and discharge line for some seconds at the beginning. This way we get less absorbed current and we lengthen the life of the compressor. For the bypass device, we use normally a small solenoid valve. Number three, we have the old differential pressure switch. This is a protection device that switches off the compressor if there is a lack of oil in the crankcase or if the oil pump is broken. This device works by differential pressure between suction and discharge of the pump. We have an oil pump normally in compressors more than 10 horsepower. In less powerful compressors, we don't have this safety device, but some manufacturers like Beezer has an optical or infrared device to control oil presence in the crankcase. In number four and five, we have the low pressure switch and the high pressure switch. They both are normally combined in an only device. The high pressure switch is used as a safety device and the low pressure switch is used as a control device to stop the compressor when the liquid solenoid valve closes due to an order from the thermostat. This is called the pump dump operation. In number C we have the vibration absorber normally placed in the discharge line to reduce noise and vibration generated by the compressor. With this device, we have less probability of broken connection and refrigerant leaks. In number 8, we have the liquid receiver. Its function is to store liquid as a hydraulic inertia tank to ensure the expansion valve is always fed with liquid refrigerant and the recent flash gas in there. This receiver is equipped with a safety valve, number 9, to release pressure from the receiver in case of emergency. We can see in number 15 a rotolock shutoff valve to isolate components like compressor or receiver and to intervene in the circuit and carry out maintenance operation. Number 10 we have the filter dryer to catch moisture and solid particles from the refrigerants and sometimes acids. This must be replaced periodically to ensure a proper functioning. Number 11 is a side glass to check we don't have flash gas in the liquid line. Otherwise we have problems with the expansion valve. We are finishing in number 12 with the solenoid valve. It is used to shut off liquid feed 
to the evaporator when the thermostat orders. The compressor will continue suctioning and gathering vapor from the evaporator. And finally, the compressor will stop by the order of the low pressure switch. To empty the evaporator is a good thing for the defrost operation. Well, these all are the usual components in a typical core room circuit. We can buy these components separately or we can get an equipped or complete condensing unit, which is offered by some manufacturers. Here we have a picture of a typical complete condensing unit in which we can see we have a steel bench with all these components we have spoken about totally installed. This condensing unit is more expensive than if you install your component yourself, but you have a certified and professional unit and you save a lot of time. Well folks, that was all for today. I hope you liked this video and I appreciate your feedback. If you liked the video, please thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Bye!